And the last amendment is by petition by a Miss Sarah Hastings, who is here. And if you want to talk about it very briefly, you can. Any change? I know that it's a little bit different than what you, the original draft article that you sent to us, so we can talk a little bit about that. But you know, we're not looking for a big presentation because the real presentation you should be ready to make. Our vote tonight is only recommendation, no recommendation, or make no recommendation. The town meeting is where you really want to um, make your formal presentation and make it succinct, if you would. Okay. So if you want to say something, fine. If not, that's okay. No, so. I would like to hear her okay. pitch. Okay. It's good practice. Yes. Exactly. It doesn't cost you anything. <laughs> Well, I guess for practice, I'll give you guys a flyer that I made a draft of. Might be helpful. Um, you could just pass it down if you could. Thank you. So, I, um, is it safe to assume that you all received a copy of the final draft of the bylaw proposal? That's the one that's in the warrant article, right? Correct. Yes. Yes, everybody received that. Yeah, so basically it's a small change to the current accessory requirement bylaw that would also allow um, a single family homeowner to apply for a backyard cottage as a, an accessory apartment. Um, the homeowner can either have an interior or an exterior apartment and not both. Um, a backyard cottage can only be up to 410 square feet and that's mainly to assure that the, ma the Hadley matrix of the landscape doesn't change dramatically at all because that's quite a small structure that would fit into the range of barns, sheds, and, and houses across the landscape. Other major concer concerns that um, usually come up around this topic are permitting. So basically, um, the permitting process would be similar to the interior accessory apartment. It would have go along the same process, but there would be a few extra steps, um, including more inspections by the building inspector, um, board of health, electrical inspector, just because there's all those additional components further away from the house. There's additional infrastructure to carry that. Um, in addition to that, a lot of people ask about sewage issues, and um, it's up to the particular case-by-case -case scenario, but um, a tiny home or a backyard cottage is the term that we're using, um, can tap into the existing septic system or the, and, and or the sewer. Um, or they can apply for a special permits through the EPA. There's a special permits for alternative gray water systems that have been permitted in the past. And a lot of people that this concept appeal to really want to use these environmentally friendly uh, methods. Um, in addition to that... Hold on for a minute. Board of Health, they don't allow that, do they? They the only allow into a sanitary sewer system or a septic system, isn't it? In this town, yeah. I'm, as far as my research has concluded, they're allowed to approve it. And if you, the application actually goes through the Massachusetts EPA, and I'm pretty sure then the Hadley Board of Health would also have to approve it based no, on their not, recommendation. Did you talk not, to them? Not from what I understand. I met with the Board of Health because there was some concern about that, and they said they have the individual autonomy not to approve it, and they are not going to approve it. For not example, over, um, I'm wondering if um, overall they would automatically say no, or they'd look at the new technologies because there are some that do very well. Well, they. For example, they have the ability to approve a sewer system on a private property, and they do not. So they're they're not going to approve that, 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 it. That, that would be their decision. Yeah, you have to find. You, 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 you may want to ask them that before you make that comment to town meeting. Okay, my research didn't come to that conclusion, so I'll certainly look into it. So yeah. thank you. Yes, um, but overall, the general thing is that it has to go through these all these boards: the health board, the building inspector an electrical inspector and it has to meet all those codes and with my house I'd have to meet those as well make the correct um, adjustments and figure it out from there and um, other questions that usually come up or have to do with taxation do you have a question no you keep going taxation um, it would obviously go the same way as other accessory apartments because currently I know that it goes through the assessor of the town and the taxes increase accordingly um, that wouldn't have to do with the things that I wrote down, but I'm pretty sure they'd take care of it on that end. Um, I do not know if they would 
prefer to increase the initial fee for the permit since there's a little bit more work that would go into it. That would be an interesting thing to find out. Um, yeah. And um, that would happen after the fact, I believe. In addition to that, let's see. Yeah, I don't think really a, the, our fee wouldn't be affected, I don't think, no. because we would not be doing anything different than we yeah, are doing sure. with uh, accessory apartments. <clears throat> you might incur other fees through the other, as you, depending on what you need from the other boards. 410 square feet, just out of curiosity, where did that magic number come from? Oh, so it was tossed around a lot because I was reading through building codes and um, so the minimum house size has changed through the International Building Code, which Massachusetts um, finally is adopting um, as of January, last January. And um, so when you calculate it out with the space requirements for rooms, and, and then you add on the bathrooms and the clearances for toilets and all such fixtures, it turned out that around 320 square feet was um, really very much enough space. and then added a little bit more so that two people could live comfortably in that space. And it can be actually as small as 140 square feet now as a legal dwelling. Um, you might have to look at certain other um, clearances for particular case-by-case -case sinks, kitchens, whatnot. I'm not sure politically if it's a good idea to go to town meeting and tell town meeting that uh, it doesn't matter what the Board of Health says because you know, oh. you're going to use the state to overrule what they do anyway. Because if, I think that's a non-starter with this. And if that's the case, then this amendment would be voted down, wouldn't it? Oh, you know, that's a topic that I'm going to go back to first thing tomorrow, actually, because this my assumption after the research that I did was that Massachusetts as a whole would allow this, and then it goes. I was reading through MassGov on about this topic, and it was hard for me to access the local board of health at the time I was doing this research. So that is a priority before the town meeting. So thank you. Okay, you what probably, you probably would probably need to actually talk to them because I don't know that their regulations are all online. Yeah, the thing that I do know about Hadley's local, um, what would matter most about this is um, the uh, aquifer levels. So that might actually be the topic of concern when it comes to composting toilets. What's, what's to prevent these cottages from not getting a building permit, not prevent them from getting a sewer hookup or a septic system, uh, no uh, plumbing inspector, uh, no electrical inspector? What's, I mean, that's what happened in your cottage. Why wouldn't these people all do the same thing? Why wouldn't they go under the radar? Yes. Because the I mean they would get you're asking well, not for permission, be. you're asking for forgiveness, it appears. Well, where, where's the where's the building inspector right now? Well Where exactly. Yeah. That's well, I mean this is not the argument before us, so we probably shouldn't get into all this. Yeah. Right. Probably, I'm sorry. That's, yeah. that's probably a reasonable topic. My feeling on this this thing is they're like a doll house, it's just too too small. If it's a accessory apartment, we should have everything uniform. Well, we can't make corrections because it is by petition. We can yeah. vote to recommend or not recommend so. I just think it's just like a dollhouse, too small. I don't see absolutely no difference myself. This thing got a foundation on it or, or something to hold it down? Yes, it requires a foundation. Um, the thing is, if you have a trailer, as my house does, you're going to have to retrofit a foundation to that and get it inspected. Because there's other foundations you can retrofit underneath. So actually, that, that's a good point. You're not specifically talking about a way to legit to ratify your particular. You're proposing a bylaw to accommodate what you call backyard cottages mm -hmm. as an alternative form of accessory apartment, and um, you know whether yours would be immediately eligible or not exactly. is not the point. Exactly. You may be proposing a bylaw that would exclude your dwelling. Very well if it didn't get inspected and okay, but I'm willing to do the work to see if I can do that. So she'd have to retrofit it in right. some way. That's, that's fine. Uh, um, any comments from anybody in the audience? So, yes, sir? My name is Tony Fight and I live on Cold Spring Lane. Um, 
to be right up front, I'm very much against this, this effort. I found it from the beginning very misleading with the, the way it's been approached. Shall I step forward so you can hear me a little better? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can hear you. Okay. I can hear you. The way it's been approached from the beginning is um, Ms. Hastings knowingly broke several town bylaws when she moved in for her own reasons, for it, as I understand it, from her, her website, for her, for the tiny house movement, for her school project, for her own career. Now, this is a movement, and it, it, I looked into this because it's not just someone who wants to live here, it's someone who um, wants to be part of a movement. And so I looked into what this movement is, and I'm, it's it's not it's it's not tiny houses. It's you could you could call it trailer parks. You could call it campers, RVs. You could call it shacks. Um, the, which my the camper that I have and hundreds of people and have they have is actually not substantially different. It's on wheels. It has it's actually better in some ways because it has electrical systems and uh, heating systems that are. That, go, that do go through inspections. This effort here to call it backyard cottages is once again another effort to mislead us. It's a, it's, it's a way to get around the laws. And for one thing, I don't think we should reward people for coming in knowingly violating the laws and then giving them a chance to um, change the laws to, to, uh, to make up for that. I'm, I'm, I don't understand why the town building inspector didn't address this because as I understand you knew about it and didn't do anything about it which is um, I find very puzzling. We could have avoided a lot of this um, by having the building inspector address this and um, address Ms. Hastings issues and then see if they could have worked it out. But it went on um, to this point and again the town has been very accommodating by giving her more time to change the laws, which I don't, I don't think that's a good precedent to, when someone is violating a law, I don't think it's a good precedent to say, okay, try to change the law, we'll give you some time, we won't enforce that law. We wouldn't do that with other laws. Um, well, we have in fact done that routinely. I think it's a mistake. I think it's a, a mistake no, in this case. I think your point is a valid one. We, uh, we went through the same process with uh, bed and breakfast and home occupations because in both cases, it wasn't something, bed and breakfast was not something that was on our radar. Somebody came in, well, more than one person came in, and they pushed the, ed pushed the envelope a little too much. And so sometimes we are reactive. And we came in, came back, and created a bylaw on bed and breakfast it, after the fact. Well, it's not it quite ratified, the same. It, yeah, no, it, 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 it is definitely not the same because it was it was a collaborative effort by the planning board and the people who had bed and breakfasts. This is not a collaborative effort. The fact pattern was the same. No, no, Somebody, no it's okay. Hey, 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 gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. No, no, I, I, I respectfully disagree with the senator from River Drive. <laughs> Well, okay. where are you from? Cold Springs. Cold Springs. Cold Springs. Well, my version of this, young lady, maybe I'll give her the benefit of the doubt of the innocent mistake she made on it. it uh, and excuse me, sir. Wait a minute. I'm not done. We, you are aware we have accessory apartments? Sure. As far as I'm concerned, this is no different than an accessory apartment. It's yeah. not taking up any new land. Okay? It's okay you don't like it. Are you going to let me rent out my camper for three hundred a month? No. No. Okay. This, this, this is, is not a camper. It's, well, it's different. Explain it's to different. me the difference. Now, would you? The Cold Spring Road is relatively tightly settled. Would you want one in every backyard? If there's enough land there, if there's not, no. That's well, that's, how much that's where the special permit comes in. Right. Yeah. Well. We well, just can't put them in there. You know better. There is no provisions. There is no provision as to total square footage of the lot. In the, that bylaw. So presuming that I had the presuming that I had the, the land, would you let me rent out my camper? No, your house? camper wouldn't meet the bylaw. Well, you take it, the wheels it's, off. It's, and it's not as much. Are you going to camp right inside right inside right well, well, yeah, well, if I if I retrofit it, put cinder blocks or cement blocks, it's on a foundation. Permanent foundation. You got to pass mass coal. Yeah, it, it, it's got to be. It's got to be mass coal. It's got no. Would we do it? I don't know. I'm not going to say yes or no. That's not, the, that's not the topic here. If you met the bylaw, you would be eligible to apply for the special permit if, it, if this bylaw passes. Well, I guess my point is yes. Anybody with a camper 
and land could retrofit on blocks and rent out. Uh, you could. Okay. No, 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 you could. Want wait, 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 wait. A lot of people would. Yeah. I think the, 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 what, the, the points you're making are not points to be debated here. I'm not trying to put you down by any stretch. What I'm saying is the points you're making and the points you raise are items for town meeting to be reviewed. Because we're we're gonna we're we're bored of that's either gonna make a recommendation for, against, or neutral. And that's gonna carry probably a little bit of weight at town meeting, but town meeting really gonna come and make the ultimate decision because it needs a two thirds majority to pass. So the, the items that everybody has here for or against or whatever else it may be are things to be brought up at town meeting because that's where to be honest, the rubber hits the road, and that's where the vote that counts. Well, I, understand, I understand that, but I'm asking this board to to vote no. I'm asking this board to make a, a, a negative I understand. recommendation. You understand that? And as I, as I said, this if you look in if you look into what this movement is, it, um, it's 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 touted as something that could, that could solve um, affordable housing, some homelessness issues, and it's um, it's it's been tried around the country. And it's it's sparked by a TV show. Uh, a lot of it's driven by a TV show. A rally television show that doesn't really show what's happening. If you look up what's hap what happens a lot of times is if you look up abandoned tiny houses, people build these things, and then they, they live in them for a year. They they might start to decide to have a family, and then it and then they can't they they realize that they can't do that there. It costs more to move the move this uh, this uh, structure than than uh, that is worth it, and they they abandon them. And um. And uh, in several cities, it's been tried to solve the homelessness. In LA right now, they had to shut down a tiny home village because they were, they were putting the homeless in these little homes. And there were death traps. They had to shut the thing down because... That's not going to happen. You're, you're opening the door. I don't think we need to open that door. I don't think we need to be a part of a movement that, that has this kind of problems. If I had, just like to say that... Is it, I'll tell you, mister, I'm voting for this. I understand you can vote however you feel is well, I think, worth it. I think it's good and it's no different in accessory apartments. Finally, when you talk about affordable housing, this is this is touted as something that's going to going to help people who don't have a lot of money, help help poor people. What's wrong with that? No, I don't think we should put poor people in little tiny homes and pretend it's solving a problem. They gotta live somewhere too. No, wait. We, we, we can do better than that. Hadley has the highest percentage of affordable housing of any community in Happy Valley. Right, I'm talking so, about I'm talking about the tiny house movement. Okay. And from from Ms. Hastings and other websites, the tiny house movement is purported to solve is it's, it's it's called sustainable. I don't think that's been the argument made here relative to this. That's, that's why it's affordable the same. housing. It, it's more of a lifestyle. At that's, least that's the argument. That's, that's what I'm saying. This has been very misleading. Yeah. But as you talk about someone who wants to move, move to the town, I think that's wonderful. Especially people who are educated, ambitious, uh, articulate. But, but it's part of a movement. I think we have to look at what that movement is, and to say that I'm voting for it because it's, you think it's it's fine. If you look, did you look at that? What the tiny house movement really is, and what it's. Uh, what, what's happening around the country, not just on the TV shows. And I think I'm, uh, I'm just asking this board to take a stand and, and say this is not acceptable to come into a town, and violate the bylaws and, uh, for, for a cause that, that many people who at, at the town meeting may not understand. They're going to see a tiny house, which is very cute, and, and, uh, and say, well, that's fine, like Mr. Michkowski said. But it's, it's more than that, sir. And that's why I think we should think about it. And and um, as I said, I'm requesting that the board vote no. Okay, I just have a quick reply. I've heard this um, this point of view a few different times, and I understand where it's coming from, of course. Um, I am in support of the tiny house movement because I really do support the lifestyle choices of living simply and the things that come along with that. Um, I just want to make note that actually this past weekend, Nantucket has voted yes for these backyard cottages in the form of tiny houses, and they use the phrase tiny house. So it's not just happening nice in the western part of the country, it's actually happening pretty close to home. And um, 
to add to that, I've been studying tiny houses for maybe like four, almost five years now. And I've pretty much looked at every option that goes into this. It did take a lot of effort, calling a lot of officials and not getting the responses necessary in order to make change. Um, so basically, this was the only platform I could use. As having this as my, my main passion, like this is the platform I needed, I'm thankful for that. Of course, it did have to include um, kind of a reactive system where I came here and had to have, have it erupt in order to take a stand for it, or in order to promote this um, change in the bylaw. Um, yeah, so I, I, that's my reply to that. And just to add to um, the confusion between trailers and tiny homes, there's actually the change in international building code was prompted by a man in Colorado. He is a building inspector himself. And um, he proposed that they reduce room sizes because a lot of people were hoping to live smaller. And it wasn't fair that we weren't allowed to. And it went through. And now um, houses of my size are two building code and can be to electric code, and I'd have to make a few minor adjustments, of course, on my house, because this is very late, very new news here. Um, so that's just a comment on that. Um, the bylaw here at hand will actually require certain levels of insulation, roof pitch, design, um, and actually the planning board here would have to approve it. So if there's problems, neighbors coming in saying, we don't want to see this in, in the backyard, it's likely that it wouldn't go through because that's important. I, I think, to the planning board. I mean, th there might be opinions otherwise, but I'd just like to make note of that. And one other thing, it is a movement of all different types of people, all different types of incomes. And um, I was just actually appointed um, a, the position of coordinator of a lab at Harvard University, which is dealing with these issues. It's um, called the Housing Lab, and they're dealing with um, this project called Legalized Tiny. They were very successful with some of their other earlier projects at, having to do with tiny houses. So I've got into that, and it's actually um, working with a lot of law students, design students, you know, in the Ivy League level. So it's not just kind of spurting up like gypsy style. It is actually kind of a lot of people trying to do this because it's the, the way they want to live, and there's got to be a way to do it. I don't, I don't know if the fact that Ivy Leaguers are suggesting that this is a good movement, or whatever you want to call it, would sway my vote, quite frankly. Yeah, this, sure. This is, because that gives me, suggested it's kind of elitist, you know what I mean? Oh, I can see, I can see yeah. that. But there's a lot yeah. of people from the Ivy League schools that actually are trying to work for nonprofits and sort of things. So mm -hmm. don't get that in the way of, of your opinion there. Yeah. Um, is there construction of this out of wood? Um, a my house? No. This proposal, is this going to be constructed out of wood? Not metal, not concrete? Well, it would have to go through, building code allows a few different types of building structures, but um, it's a, there's actually some discretion for the planning board and the building inspector to make decisions on design, actually, because the, the language in the bylaw says that it must be um, a uh, traditional building, looking like a traditional best building structure, and if you see some really funky, crazy, colorful, flat roof type of house, you can say, I mean, first of all, flat roof, roof wouldn't wouldn't pass building code, but you get the idea. That's and Hadley is about as close to Nantucket as we are to uh, San Francisco. It, you know, I, I really don't, you know, probably the reason they're putting tiny houses on in Nantucket is they have to have some place for their maid to live, okay? So that, 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 that suggestion that perhaps we should fall in Nantucket's lead doesn't hold okay, any weight. Okay, well I'll bring up the point of um, elders in Hadley. There's a lot of, there's a growing elder population, um, senior citizens in Hadley, that need caregiving, and this is a really nice opportunity for people to live close by and still maintain their independence. And there's been Hadley residents that came up to me hoping for this because they're like, you know, my daughter lives in Hadley and I, I can't afford to keep up my large house and I just want to live simply behind her and, you know, this is kind of a need. It wouldn't be sprouting up all over town, of course, because there are so many people that would live in a, in a small structure. I've seen, I've seen your house, and it is cute, but I'm not sure I want my mother living in it. Oh, well, yeah. uh, it could if be twice still, the if size. she was still alive. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, to, the twice the size of to your question about people can't afford to live in town, Hadley has the lowest tax rate by far oh, compared to any communities around. So if Hadley is not affordable because of our low tax rate, what are 
what are we looking for? Uh, so from that point of view, and if you were looking for affordability, like I mentioned, the uh, affordable housing, we do have the largest percentage. So that argument really doesn't fly, I think, uh, for the town of Hadley. I hear that opinion, but also if you come from my point of view, um, I'm a recent graduate, I'm highly employable, but it's very difficult. I will not be able to afford land in Hadley, let alone Belchertown or any other town in the area. So I'm wondering how people really do afford this. And um, as far as I know, some, some senior citizens are having a hard time. Even though Hadley has a really great high percentage, it's still hard to get into these um, apartments. And I've heard, heard stories about this. But what, what Mr. Joe is saying, yeah, we got a lot of affordable housing. But go find one now. Exactly. They're all taken. Exactly. There's none available. Where are they? They're all taken. One woman waited about two years um, um, in order to... My sister was okay, looking for... Yeah, we, okay. We're, okay. we're not going yeah, really well, in the direction of the yeah, bylaw yeah, yeah. vote well, here. Don't be all. making these statements. <laughs> Any other, other comments from anybody? I'd yes, like ma'am. make a statement in favor. Um, I'm Jane Broughton, 69 Hawkenham Road. Um, I'd like to make a statement in favor of recommending this as a, um, a way of increasing the range of possibilities for housing solutions when people are trying to work out if they can't find something, um, if they'd like to live close to someone else. Um, individual arrangements, making, uh, increasing the range of possibilities for individuals to find solutions to housing. Um, are there really enough single occupant um, type units in this area, and especially for people modest incomes, um, it would be a solution for, for those We people. have the apartment, the apartments, uh, if you own a house, you can add an apartment onto yours. You yes, can, if they want, yeah, if the so that's, homeowner wanted to do that, but they might prefer to have a separate, it would just increase the range of possibilities. But then you have to realize that is almost a separate building, separate se septic system, separate yeah, sewer have hookup. To agree to it, but if but that agree adds to, it, to the cost, so it's kind of destroying your argument a little bit. If it's going oh. to be affordable, and but okay, I'm, it's I certainly more affordable it. than buying a buying you know buying a whole plot and building a It'll be less unaffordable. But you know what this lady saying is that absolutely true. I mean, there's people tell me they can't find no reasonable everything because the college down every damn price is jacked sky high in this place will you tell me where is the affordable housing in this town that people can older people our young people they want to live here they can't afford to live in here they're going to get out amherst did that look what happened in amherst the same thing's going to happen here all the older people and all the young people coming up they're not going to be able to afford to live in this town. Out they go. I, I respectfully disagree, but that's an argument for a different time. I think we should I can't move wait. ahead with our vote. Anybody else? Well, okay, so we have a choice. We can make vote to recommend, recommend H, I mean, recommend to accept it, recommend to not accept it, or recommend no decision. I don't think we have to recommend no decision. I think we, we either vote to support it, vote to not support it, or take no vote. I don't think we have to. I make a motion to support it. Second. A motion and a second to make a rec to recommend acceptance of the vote. Recommend accepting the bylaw. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. 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 Motion fails. Okay. I recommend not to su support the bylaw. We have a second. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion on it? 
How many votes do you need to? We need three to two. Just now that the Dow Supermajority is just a record, it's just a majority vote. All in favor of the vote to not recommend acceptance of the bylaw say aye. Aye. All against it say nay. 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 That motion fails. We're allowed to one motion left possibilities, which is to make no recommendation. Just to let you make the motion. Donald's gone. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's where we need to make a record. We need to. Well, okay, make a that, that's going to be that's going to be the decision by default. Yes. That we, we no no nobody <laughs> voted to recommend it. Nobody voted to be against it. So the default will be we are making no recommendation. I'll just put no further motions. At the mercy of town meeting. That's correct. Well, it was going to be that way anyway. Yeah, there's right, exactly, nothing. Exactly. Right. But we're this, not, this is right. shadow boxing. There's nothing that no. was going to happen here no. that had any impact on this going exactly. to town meeting. So this, this basically leaves us as being a neutral party on this one. Which I think is appropriate in circumstances when we're dealing with petition articles, that, especially ones that are novel. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of interest in this, and I think. Some people are going to show up for town meeting. They haven't been at town meeting in 25 or 30 years. Yeah. Just for the just for that. Just for everybody's vote. Well, typically, the zoning articles are the very last articles at town meeting, and in this particular case, this is the very last article at town meeting. And so, you need to hang around to the end to vote on it. Yeah. That's it. Good luck. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank